Hi, I'm Jade Hernandez, a camouflage tattoo artist and educator. I help beauty bosses effectively market their business and become the authority in their field, close more leads and make more money. In the past six years, I've launched two successful beauty businesses to multiple six figures with over a hundred five-star raving reviews and several media press spotlights. While most marketers will tell you to hustle and work harder for success, I'll show you how to create more value from the inside out so that you work less, make more, and truly expand and transform your business and life. This is the Beauty Expanded Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be introducing you to a fellow camouflage tattoo artist slash educator and even a client of mine from the past. Her name is Jensi Jacob, and she is the founder of Invisimar on Instagram, which I will have in the show notes. And the reason why I am so excited to be introducing you guys to her is because I believe a lot of you are going to be able to relate to her story. Jensi and I first met. She was a client interested in getting her calves camouflage tattoo and I was her artist and so that was the first encounter Jensi and I had ever had and she healed perfectly which you know we'll go into more details in the episode but it actually took her a long time to heal and uh, interestingly enough she got the procedure done and found a passion in it and actually wanted to train so after I trained her she jumped right in with two feet and started her own business she's now been doing this for a year and it's really, really impressive to see what, what has all transpired within that year. What I also find very interesting and inspiring about Gen Z's story is that she didn't have an entrepreneurial background, which I know a lot of you guys can relate to. She had never owned her own business. She actually was working corporate America and found a passion in what we were doing and wanted to start that for herself. In this interview, you're also gonna hear what her friends and family and even fiance thought about her jumping into this new field with zero clients and zero background and experience. And I hope what you gather from this interview is that if she can do it, so can you. Because I know a lot of you are jumping into the PMU and tattoo world probably feeling the same way. How am I going to make this all work? How do I build a website? Where, how am I going to land my first client? And Gen Z's going to share her perspective and what really helped motivate her to get through those challenges. And so without further ado, here is Gen Z Jacob. So everyone here, we have Gen Z online with us, which I'm so excited. First things first is how long have you been doing this? And I'm so curious because I do know that you were working some sort of corporate job, but I don't know all the details. So if you can just kind of share your background before you jumped into entrepreneurship. So what were you doing before this and how long have you been doing this? Sure. So I went to college for accounting for my bachelor's in accounting, but I definitely did not enjoy corporate life, really. A nine to five was just not for me, but life really did take me down that path because I never knew what my passion was. In my early 20s, kind of, I jumped around different industries, just like totally random jobs, enterprise rent a car. I did end up doing accounting. And from 2019 to 2020, two years, I was in the corporate world and completely miserable, did not enjoy my life whatsoever. And I was on Instagram one day and I found you. And throughout my entire life, one thing that always held me back personally were my stretch marks. And it was terrible. I always felt like I was kind of in a, my own little prison, mental prison, really, that I wasn't able to just explore my just body, really, or like show, not show off. And yeah, I'm kind of like going to kind of show off, but just just to be comfortable, really. So when I found you, you know, we had a consultation, everything went smooth. I cried during my consultation. I don't know if you remember. I don't remember that. No, I was because you asked me like, you know, what would this mean to you? And it was a very touchy topic. And I cried because it was, it's something that I struggled with all my life. So I flew to you in June of 2020 to get my camouflage tattoo done. And from the beginning, Jade, you were so sweet and so welcoming and made me feel absolutely so comfortable. You know, it's, it takes a lot for someone who never really 
you know, love their body or like, you know, parts of their body. And you, I'm coming to you to help me out. And you were just so kind from the beginning. And I fell in love with the process that day. When I left, I was like, oh my God, if I could do this, I feel like my life has a meaning. And, you know, a lot of people might, you know, love the corporate job. I really didn't. I really never thought it meant something in my life or meant something to me or it was fulfilling. It was no way, shape, or form fulfilling. It took me a couple of months. You know, I when I went back, I flew back to New York and I wrote in my diary that if I could do this, this would be so amazing. And I, I, you know, for this podcast, I looked at my diary and I was like, oh my God, you know, one year, all that really changed was just my mindset. You don't have to know everything in order to just do that first step. And that's just to start. And if you start, truly believe that everything else really will like fall into place. Wait, 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 and... wait I'm going to back up a second. Sorry, because sorry. I definitely <laughs> sorry. Got... That's so cool. So I got chills. So I uh-huh. kind of vaguely remember you crying a little bit. I do remember more so that when we were tattooing, I remember it was pretty painful for you. Like, oh. Which was kind of funny because like we were even joking around like, we can't have you walk out of here with just one leg done. Yeah, and You were a really good sport about it. But in regards to, okay, so what I find so fascinating is that you... So when I think of, a, of accounting, like, I mean, I, that's a particular type of person. Like, I love my CPA, and I definitely, that's not something that I would ever be remotely interested in doing myself, hence why I outsource it. But when I think about my job and my personality versus hers, that's a huge contrast. Because I feel like what we do is so artistic. It's the beauty industry. It's very social. Whereas accounting, you literally think of someone just crunching numbers all day in front of a screen or paper, or pencil. And so it's really, really interesting. I really, really love my CPA, but it's so Mm -hmm. interesting to think that, okay, so yes, you've worked in corporate America, you've had some really odd end jobs, but this was like your first, like you've never been an entrepreneur. You never thought while you were jumping from job to job, you never thought about starting something of your own until this moment. Absolutely. So ever since little, I really did want to start a business because my dad was an entrepreneur and, you know, in India though, you know, America and Indian entrepreneurship is completely different, but I just never found something that I truly love. And all throughout my twenties, I really believe that I jumped around different industries to find what I really liked and never did in my mind did I think camouflage tattooing was even a thing, right? Like I was just so fortunate that I was able to find you And yeah, I didn't even have anyone to ask questions. None of my friends owned a business. I don't know anyone that owned a business for me to even like ask for help. But one thing that really helped me throughout my whole transition kind of was I listened to a lot of like self, not self-help, but changing my paradigm and truly understanding that how much power we really have within ourselves and that you are one decision away from a completely different different life. And that one decision, it's totally up to you. Whatever you truly want to do, you can do it. And, and I had a lot of, you know, writing down manifesting. When I was driving to my corporate job, I came to you, you know, I love the process, everything. And I started writing, like, if I could, am I able to do it? I didn't even tell anyone, my fiance, my sister, my best friend, nothing about this, because I was scared. I was so intimidating because there were so many things that I didn't know how it was how I was going to do. How do you build a website? You know, little things. How do you find your first client? Where are you going to work at it? What are the forms that you need to even fill out to become, you know, legal? Like so many things. And one thing I've always consciously did was I realized like those were the things that I'm just listing off the things that wouldn't work for me I just shifted my focus and I shifted my focus and started to realize or started to think about the things that would work for me and how this would work for me and you know like I said like my old job I was really trading my time for money and I really did not enjoy that And with this, of course, you know, we work all the time, but it's completely different. The amount of freedom that we have with our time is, it's unmatched, really. So I was really intimidated to start, but 
the biggest thing you can do was find a great trainer who teaches you like what you need to do. And then after that, you're on your own. So after that, all I had was, of course, I always had you, you know, you were always nice answering all the questions, but my mindset of just focusing on why these things would work out. And, and I am really, am doing this to benefit others because I remember college days crying, crying to myself in the bathroom because I felt so just ugly with the stretch marks. And I'm not talking, you know, you, you've seen my calves, Jade, like there were a lot of stretch marks. And, and I was never comfortable. And I remember feeling that way. And I really found my purpose because I'm now able to eliminate that anxiety, depression, all of that from someone else. I just realized my fears were just holding me back, but my passion was to help others who wouldn't feel the way I felt when I was little, because now that we have this, it's our job to let people know that, Hey, this is even a even an option for stretch marks. It's totally up to you whether you want to do it or not, but there is an option. And I wish this was available when I was younger. And that was just my driving force, really. Anytime I thought about all the reasons why I'm scared or it didn't work out or why it wouldn't work out and why would people trust me over someone else? And I'm just like, no, you know, I always talked very kindly to myself. And I also think that's a huge factor because you have to be kind to yourself, the way you think, positive thoughts. Yeah. So you came in, you got the service done, then you decided, so that was one decision, right? To get this done for yourself. Then it takes another decision. You re- write it in your journal that this would be amazing if I could offer this. So then you had to make another pivotal decision in your life to be like, okay, I'm going to commit to myself. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to try and make this work. You go get trained. And then after you got trained, were you still juggling your full-time job and trying to start this on the side too? Yeah. So my initial plan was train with you in October of 2020, that I was going to come back, get a touch up and train with you in January of 2021. And my whole idea was that I was going to, you know, have my corporate job, but maybe work for them until April. April, May-ish, because I couldn't leave their job in before March because I had like a little contract. They sent me to school, so I owed them until March. And then I was just going to start this. But great story. I got fired the same week I trained with you. Nice. Yeah, with, I, I had no idea that was coming. They approved my training days, everything. And, you know, going back in October, I was writing in my journal. I had to really believe it myself and decide on my own that I want to do this. And that's when I even told other people, right? And honestly, a lot of people did not think this was a good idea. They're like, what? You're going to do stretch marks? You know, that's a thing. And my mom was like a tattoo artist. Like, are you kidding me? Like, look, you know, Indian moms, my mom's yeah, yeah. like, yeah. And I'm like, yep, I'm going to do it. And they started telling me their limiting beliefs, right? They were like, oh, you know, first year in business is never going to be fruitful. And businesses fail in the first five years. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why would you say this to anyone, let alone when you've never been a business owner, there's no reason or you don't have any idea how that's working. So, or how that works. So I really made a mental note, like no matter how many people think it's a great idea, don't, I really want to do this because I truly think it's amazing. After I saw the results to my camouflage, I was like, I have to do this. Like there's nothing that stopping me other than myself. And a lot of people, you know, my fiance, when I told them, he was like, really? I don't think that's a good idea. And I'm like, no, I, you know, I really want to do it. And we're getting married and this is a big investment, you know? And he was like, are you sure? And I'm like, this is it. I want to do it. And I told myself that this corporate job would be the last job I would ever work for anyone because I did not like micromanaging. I'm just not a nine to five person. I love people. I'm a big people person. So when I lost a job, 
I was shocked. I didn't see it coming. I was like, oh my God, there goes my cushion that I told myself mentally, you can do this, but you have your full-time job. And then you're going to jump into this, you know, slowly because Jade, I know how long it would take us to get one before and after. So I knew that my journey was going to be a slow start. And that I was totally okay with that. But once I lost my job, then part of me was like, oh, you know, I'm so scared to jump into this. I didn't see this coming. Or should I get a full-time job somewhere else and then do this on the side? Because, you know, you would only get like clients maybe on a weekday or something when I started. And, and I was like, no, I truly believed. And I started to really learn myself as well. And I believe that I, I'm, I become more confident when I do the things I told myself that I would do. And I really told myself that I would never work for somebody else. And this is it. And I was like, wow, I really did manifest this, you know, it happened way before I wanted it. But I remember from October to December, I have an hour drive to my corporate job and an hour drive back. And I would only listen to podcasts like motivational podcasts about limiting beliefs and how to change your paradigm. And I really changed my life because before I was listening to like crime stories or like, you know, which I still enjoy, but I don't listen to them. I only listen to motivational stuff. And I was driving and I truly manifested working on people and having clients and all of that. So, yeah. So I lost my job the same week and I was like, whew, okay, this is, this is it. This is it. And I took some time, like, you know, a month or two to just travel and just have some peace of mind because I was like, I'm starting something new. I wanted, you know, everything to go smooth. And I wanted to just know what a business really was. And I really took those, you know, times, January and February to really look up how to build a website. I got on Skillshare and learned a bunch of skills. And I was really learning more about undertones, overtones, because of course your training is all I need, but continuous learning is something I still to do to this day because it's so important. And I was doing all that, still writing my journal in present tense. And I have zero clients, but I'm writing how great of a tattoo artist I am and how I'm put on this earth to bring peace, comfort, because that's truly how I feel what me and you do, because how much we're really able to help others just feel free. So I I was writing it, writing it every day. I would write it. And I officially introduced Invisimark in March of 2021 to Instagram. And I manifested my first client. I don't know where she came from. (laughs) I got one in April and I just had one client in April and I was totally okay with that. But in January and February also, I jumped into tattooing because I tattooed my cousin. I knew like when I posted or when I posted my, you know, introduced Invisimark, of course, I wanted like before and after pictures that I did. So I jumped into it in the behind the scenes kind of and posted her peeling progress pictures and everything. I was very open about how it would look, everything just transparent because, you know, I was able to take the pictures And I got my first client and I was super happy and it was a slow start. As in, you know, one client a month is fine. Everything just went so smoothly. And well, I don't know if you remember this. So I actually didn't know that you lost your job the week of your training, which I think is Mm -hmm. so interesting because it it ended up being a blessing in disguise. I do believe that the universe provides what we want, but not maybe in the way that we want it. And so in some ways, as you're listening to these podcasts and you're trying to break through your limiting beliefs, the universe put that on your plate and and was all like, oh, well, let me show you what your limiting belief was because you thought all this time that you would have this security blanket of having a good stable start while you have a full-time job, a full-time income, while you do this on the side and here the universe is all like, that's a limiting belief because you've ultimately have already proven that you can become successful without having to balance and juggle a full-time job while you do this on the side. So one, I think that's really cool. And then two, the other thing is, is I don't know if you remember this, but I remember during our training and I always say, the quality of your life is always determined by the quality of your questions. And Uh so you asked a really 
deep, very thoughtful question to me. And it always stood out in my mind because when you were in training, you're like Jade. Out of all the students that you've trained, what have you noticed from students that become successful in this versus people who may have a harder time or a bigger challenge? Mm -hmm. And I remember telling you, you have two options. You can either dive in with one foot in, one foot out, which is like the job, which is where you thought you were going to go, right? Until you got that. Absolutely. But what I told you was that I noticed that when you dive in with two feet, that's when things really begin to accelerate. That's where the success is easier to, it's scarier, but it's actually the faster track to success. And that's how I did it. Everything I do, you know, being a serial entrepreneur, starting businesses here and there, every time I have been successful at my business. The common denominator has been when I have jumped in with two feet, which makes sense because in the long run, you know, what I've noticed is when students, and I get it, I, you know, no judgment. I totally understand why people keep their full-time job and kind of start this on the part-time side gig, hoping that eventually it'll flip-flop and that they'll be doing this as their full-time gig. But what I noticed is that we are very good at deceiving ourselves. And so when you think that you can do both, you have to be really, you have to be realistic and truthful and honest because at the end of the day or at the end of the week, after you've worked 40 hours and you've gone home, maybe work out and maybe you've made dinner or maybe put the kids to sleep or whatever. It's like really at what point, like how much time do you really have to invest in your side gig? And if you are going to take that route, what I have noticed is that that's the more challenging route. It takes longer. And I actually think that's more challenging because we are only given a short amount of resources, time and energy in a day. Yeah, we have 24 hours in a full day, but you need to rest and you need to recuperate and regenerate, you know, for the next day to be productive. And so really at the end, like, it's like, how many hours do you really have in the day to focus on your full-time job, your family and your own self-care and your well-being? on top of starting a side gig. And so, yeah, it may look like the easier route and the more common sense route, but what I find is that it actually is more challenging. But the other side of jumping in with two feet, yeah, it's scary, but it's that fear, I think that can flip flop and like actually motivate you to keep going. Cause like you said, you didn't have a security blanket. You actually had time. You could enjoy life, get some skills under your belt, that more business development that we're all going to help you out anyways in the long run. And yeah. then, like you said, get all your branding, everything launched. So who knows what would have happened if you did have that job still, you know, or if you got another job because you were scared because you lost it. Yeah, Jade, you're so right, because I remember doing my nine to five job and coming home and being just drained. And all I'm doing is sitting behind a computer, right? It's not like manual labor or like hard work, but your brain is just exhausted. And there's no way that I'm going to be able to, you know, and I really do think like one of the things that makes me successful is the time that I put in into my business. All the time that I just took and took my time to build the website. It's not like a one page form website. Like the dedication, being able to be flexible with my time, it would have never happened if I was juggling another full-time job. And also, I truly believe you should really focus on the quality of your life and not the comfort, really. You know, it's always hard to start something new and it's very intimidating and you don't know where it's going to go. And one of the biggest things for me, my limiting beliefs were no one even knows this is a thing. Like, how are you going to get your clients? Are you going to go out and pitch? I had no idea. But the thing is like, you're going to figure it out. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. You're going to figure it out in your way, your style, and just give yourself that leeway to figure things out and also be kind to yourself. Talk kindly to yourself and surround yourself with really positive things of why you can do it. And if you truly know that you have limiting beliefs, listen to a podcast on how you can change those limiting beliefs. So yeah, I completely agree. It's jumping into this with both feet has literally changed my life night and day. Yeah. And I would yeah. not be here. Do you Sorry, remember even asking that question? I don't actually, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I it, but I it just, it was such a good question. And it actually inspired me down the road when I started mm -hmm. my podcast, because that is ultimately the quality of what you continually created and built after that. And it's just so interesting with the timing and everything, because it's mm -hmm. almost like everything was truly aligned for you to do this. 
So true, Jade. I remember you telling me, and you even wrote it in my last note, like in the feedback, like jump into this with both feet. Oh um, so I remember you telling me, yeah, I remember you telling me, and, you know, it's okay to be scared, you know, and everyone is scared and we all got to start from somewhere and bottom is still somewhere, you know, and I had no problem starting. And this is an industry where people have to trust your work and see what you're able to provide before, before anything, because, and it does take time and that's okay. And that's, there's so much beauty in it because now I can really t go back and be like a year ago, I had one client, my first for an entire month. And I'm so happy that I was happy back then that I knew that I'm people are going to find me and that I am here for a bigger picture. And that's to help others. And it will never steer me in the wrong direction. I truly believe that. I love that. Yeah. And I love everything that you have shared so far. I want to get more into some of the practical things. So now you're skilled, you, you have no job, right? This is, <laughs> this is, this is what you're loving my life. <laughs> yes. Loving your life. Even though it's really simple, I do think it's extremely important because I don't think most people do talk to themselves kindly. I do think we are our own worst critic, mentally, emotionally, physically, all that stuff. So I definitely think that's really important. And I don't want anyone to bypass that as like, oh, that, that sounds good. That would be mm -hmm. nice to have. Because I actually do think that was a huge determining factor of, of where you are now. Absolutely. Um, but when you had that extra time, bring me back to that. So now you have this extra time on your hands. You're learning how to build your website. You're figuring out the name, all those things. So how do you get your first client when you don't have a portfolio? Share with me that process. Lead me down to how you landed your first client. Cause I know you got them on Instagram, right? Yeah. What were you doing behind the scenes that you think compelled her to call you? Sure. So I was posting very informative pictures. I didn't want to post just to post. I wanted each of my posts to have a meaning and each of my posts to educate people. And when I was starting, all I really had was how it looks right now and how it looks immediately after and what to really expect. And what I did was like just made posts about educating people. And I truly believe my first client was, I got really lucky. She was actually looking for a camouflage tattoo artist. And she just talked to me. We had a virtual consultation. And I think that really helps as well, you know, sitting down with them and answering all their questions and them seeing like, you're eager, you know, you're so excited to do this and how, you know, how it changed my life and how I can't wait to help change theirs. So the second client, I can tell it's more like, you know, they saw my pictures and really it's like when they're asking or they, when they're sending an inquiry, I really do take my time and answer the questions or like just go over everything that, that need to know and what to expect and what it would look like. So I think being transparent was very important before I got any clients, you know, I worked with what I had. Did you ever have a client ask you, how long have you been doing this? What's your portfolio? Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. Did, and how did you respond to that? I had no problem. Like, yeah, I always send them your page and I'm like, you know, I learned from the best. So they know I'm in good hands, really. And, you know, they did ask me, but I don't think they ever. That never that, deterred them. No, never did. Yeah. At least, at least not that I know of. Yeah. And not face to face, at least as in virtual consultations. Yeah. And I think that's really important for new artists to listen to because you're being confronted as a new artist, you're being confronted with the fact that your limiting belief of no one's going to hire me or no one's going to pay me if I don't have a portfolio, which you've just proven that that's false and myself included because I had no portfolio when I started either. And then the other thing is, is that even if you're a new artist, doesn't mean that someone still isn't going to hire you to do this for them, because as you just proved as well, like, like that was the important follow-up question is, did you notice anyone being deterred by that? And it sounds like no, because I'm, I'm assuming that when they're doing the consultation with you, you're being transparent, you're being engaging, and that trust is already building up. Even the transparency of like, hey, like, look, you know, I'm a new artist, but I trained with so-and-so and blah, 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 blah. And so that doesn't sound like you've never had anyone just straight up be like, no, not interested. Nope, not at all. Not because I 
didn't have a portfolio. The client that I did, which was my cousin, turned out amazing. One session, I didn't even need a second session. And what really helped me, and I think was like, even before we were able to see her after picture, I was very confident in myself. I posted the progress picture, everything, or like what to look for, what would it look like even before a before and after. So I think when I showed the before and after once, you know, after the two months, oh, like it didn't. And also we are, we're, you know, after I trained with you, we're trained professionals. You know what I mean? It's not like a random person wants to do this out of their basement. We invested in ourselves in a great course and we are trained professionals now. If someone is like, you know, I'm scared, I offer them a patch test. Hey, do you want to do a patch test? And a lot of people are like, no, you know, I don't want to wait. And there, a lot of them drive far. So they're like, I don't want to come all the way there to do two little lines and I was like, okay, it's totally up to them. And also I really think the reason people trust me is because I went to a reputable place. I went to you to train and you have this huge portfolio and I chose my trainer wisely. And they might not know, but I asked all my questions. I don't shy away from asking questions. I wanted to make sure that I was fully confident and know what I need to do before I left your training facility, really. So to me, I truly felt like I was a trained professional just starting my business. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be shy about it, that you're a new artist. We all start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What has been maybe one of your bigger challenges that maybe you weren't expecting now that you've been in this industry what's a challenge that like you're like oh I wasn't really expecting that or this was the biggest challenge for me you know Jade nothing awesome. nothing what I am this? so grateful what about this because I have a lot of students where yeah. maybe it's not getting the clients Maybe Mm -hmm. it's talking about money, like the pricing. I would say for most people, money is always attached to a lot of emotions, yeah, emotions, limiting beliefs, wounds, you name it, right? We all have some baggage when it comes to money. So how did you navigate that? And then were you scared being a new artist and quoting people? What was your strategy on that? Yeah, when I first started, even though I had my cousins before and after, I was definitely scared to be like, yep, it's 1500 or whatever for like buttocks or 2000, whatever, right? I was so scared. I definitely quoted them less than a thousand. And then when the yes was like that, I was like, oh, okay. You know, they were, they were, I was like, shoot. Okay. I was like, you know, you told me like not to sell myself short. So I kept it just at like 500, 500, at least minimum 500. And maybe because I was in the receiving end of this jade that I knew how much difference that it would make and how that it's like a permanent result, you know? So now I don't have any problem or even like before when you really know the impact or like how amazing this is, I don't have no problem quoting them now a little bit higher, but when I first started, it's, you know, people are willing to pay you. That's also a limiting belief. I'm not nobody to dictate that $2,000 might be, you know, a lot for me. It might not be a lot for you. You know what I mean? So you can go in thinking with like, oh my God, 500, they might not pay. Let them be the judge, you know, let them say like, hey, I can't work it. And then you have financing options. And if not, you know, there are ways around it. And also my whole intention is to truly help people. So if they want to get it for cheaper, I would absolutely help them out because the bigger picture is for me and you to work together and for you to, you know, feel confident. And a lot of times when I've done it, they always come back for other sessions because there's not one person that has like just few stretch marks. They have other areas. So they always come back, even if you give them a little discount or whatever. Yeah. Don't put your own limiting beliefs to others because others find this a lot more valuable than like what you think really. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's definitely don't don't make any assumptions. Don't throw your limiting beliefs in regards to money onto other people's because you can never assume what is going to be valuable or worth it to them. Absolutely. Um, I love that. Okay, so here's another question. Yeah. So now that you're, you know, in the industry, obviously not everyone has 
you know, five star amazing experiences. Not everyone heals in the time that you thought. You know, at least for me, my own personal experiences, sometimes I'll literally be tattooing someone and I'll be like, I just got a feeling you're going to heal so quickly. And then all of a sudden, I swear to God, like it'll take them forever to heal. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I really just can't tell. Or sometimes I'll work on someone's skin, you know, maybe someone who's elderly and I'll be like, oh, you know, it's probably going to take you a while to heal. And then she'll like literally heal in a couple of weeks uh-huh. so for you. Has that ever happened to you? And what do you do not to freak out? Because I will admit, Gen Z, you were one of those clients where when we did the back of the yep. I was like, oh my God, is this girl going to heal? And then you eventually did heal, but it took you months. Six months. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things that, because that did scare me too, Jade, not going to lie, but I truly tr- just trusted you. And I knew that, you know, my skin is prone to hyperpigmentation. So I knew that it would take me like, two, I was thinking maybe like two and a half months, not like five, six months, but it healed beautifully. So because it happened to me, that's something that I tell all my clients. I tell them, Hey, and I ask them if you're, you know, do you know if you're prone to hyperpigmentation? They, most of them don't even know what that is. So I explain it to them and I tell them, Hey, you know, and I work with a lot of like darker skin tones. So especially my pitching, you know, in, in my virtual consultation, I talk about, you know, it could take longer what that means in my email. I talk about it when they come in, I talk about the whole thing and I tell them my story. Hey, it took me six months to heal. We never know how you're going to heal. And it's just a conversation I have with them. And I've had clients that's four or five months, you know, with, and I'm like, oh my God. And I was like, I just have to trust myself, you know, because in the first session, you've taught me how we can eliminate going darker. So I always am like, okay, I trust myself and I take my time when we create the inks and everything. So I am confident, but (laughs) absolutely, that is something I tell my clients and they still text me agency. They're still dark. I'm like, Hey, don't worry about it. You know, just like what you used to do for me. Hey, don't worry about it. It's so normal. You're going to heal. And because I've heard, heard from you from, you know, like in my healing period or like even the email, really, I knew what to expect. So that's also something I'm very transparent about. And I realized like a lot of people feel an ease when they know that this is what they expect. And also that's the reason why I'm on my page. I'm very transparent about the healing journey on like lighter skin and darker skin tone, because it does take a while to heal. And we never, we can't predict how long it's going to take. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What are some of the podcasts, just so that way the listeners know, what are some of your favorite podcasts that you listen to, to help you with your limiting beliefs? Because it sounds like that was a huge part of just making sure that you had the right mindset as family and friends and fiance were like, are you sure? And then you didn't have that security blanket of a job. Yeah. So I'm a huge, I would say Bob Proctor. Do you know who that is, Jay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. I love him so much. He literally changed my life. I would listen to, so repetition is also one of the th- ways that you change your paradigm. And I knew that if I'm getting into this industry where I have no idea what I'm doing, I really have to change my paradigm and my, my way of thinking. So a lot of like think and grow rich on like the condensed version, I would do it on repeat while I'm working. That would be my background noise before I go to bed. Because even when you fall asleep, your subconscious will pick up all these things that's being taught or like being said, you know? So I really wanted to make the change within myself. So a lot of YouTube Rob Proctor seminars that he'd done, probably listened to all of them. There's so much on how to change your paradigm. I was reading Think and Grow Rich and there are manifestation tips really. And I had Jade, I had no idea this would work because I'm so new to this. So one of the things to write down every single day in the present tense, what you want to do, and also look in the mirror and look, look at yourself in your eye and say what you want to manifest. And I sounded like an idiot and like, I'm the, not that I'm the greatest, but I am, you know, a great camouflage tattoo artist. People will come to me from all over the world because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I would say it. And at this point, I'm not even training, right? I haven't even trained. And I felt like complete idiot. I laughed at myself. And I have to say this out loud. So 
So I'm like sneaking before my fiance would get up into the bathroom so I can look in the mirror and say it. But a lot of repetition stuff. And I would say Bob Proctor, also secret, the secret, you know, manifesting. And really manifesting is just your vibration. Your thought really is what leads you. And if you're focused on like negative thinking. So before I really made up the mind that I really wanted to do this, I had a lot of limiting beliefs like, how am I going to do this? I got a good training. Now what? Now it's totally up to me. So I just really, instead of listing out my limiting beliefs, I physically wrote down why it would work for me. You know, I'm so passionate about this. I, that was one. I got a great training. That was number two. I always do have you to come and ask questions that I'm sure I've taken so much advantage of like coming to you and asking all the questions and truly know that there are people out here just to help you, you know? And I started with this. I started the camouflage tattoo training when I had when I didn't even know where I was going to work out of, I had no idea. And I was like, you know what? The universe got me. I kept telling myself, Jade, you will. Okay. So I, I do remember telling you, and I had no idea on my day one training. I had no idea where I was going to work out of day two. One of my friend who owned a business, she asked, she was like, hey, Jensi, oh my God, this is cool. You know, I posted whatever we're doing on my story. And she asked if I wanted to work out of her salon. And I cried because I was like, oh my God, it's so true that like, let things happen to you, you know, and things will work out for you. You don't have to have all the answers to start. Right. And my mom was asking me, where are you going to work out of? I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Let me start one thing because I didn't want to freak myself out. I didn't want anxiety because that is a lot of, you know, that would cause anxiety. It's a new complete tree and you have no idea what everything is happening, but yeah, limiting beliefs is out. You have, it has to be out the window. Yeah. I love that. What have you noticed now that you're training, what have you noticed within your own students? So to flip the question on you, what is one thing that you've noticed with students who do become successful at this, they commit to this even after your training. Have you noticed any common denominators? Have you noticed any common factors on the ones that tend to be successful at this? Literally, Jade, starting right away. Okay, yeah. Yep, and and I only say that because there are students of mine who are just, you know, yeah, they're waiting for a good name or they're waiting for, I'm like, no, just jump into this. And, you know, I, of course you need a name, but they're waiting for something else to happen and then jump in, you know, don't wait for us. Guess what? It's still going to be a slow journey. So might as well start right now and figure out how you want to brand your business or how you want other people to see, you know, you at and take your time with it. Try to stand out. And I say that only because you know, people can tell if you put time into your business, really. An outsider can really tell if it's like a side business or not. And like I can tell, you know, and I don't even know the person. So really, if this this is your baby, so really take care of it. Make it grow like how you want it. Slow growth is still amazing growth. And and let people just trust you. And my Clients just started coming to me after they really f saw what Jinsi was able to create and Jinsi's before and after. And that took time. And, you know, it takes time for our before and after. That's that's one thing with our industry. Not a, you know, not a bad thing, but not the best thing either. Right. Because I want to post that, you know, before and after immediately done, but it takes a while. So be patient and know that, you know, everything will work out. Do you do everything yourself in house? Yeah. Or have you learned to outsource anything to kind of make Nothing. it free? Wow. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, cool. but, I had nothing to do. This is my baby. You know, I spent a lot of time and I am so happy. I'm the happiest I've ever been. And I have so much free time. Like, I'm, you know, maybe not now because, you know, we do a lot more, but. You know, but I can, I should probably outsource some, maybe like, I would, I think I want to get an assistant soon, but I also, I'm like a control freak and I don't know what I would give it to my clients or give it to my 
assistant and what I would do because my husband was like, do the virtual consultations, you know, let the assistant do that. I'm like, oh no, like, I feel like I am also a selling point in the business. You know, my passion really does stand out and that's not happening. And of course, you know, you got to follow up with your clients. So I don't want my assistant to do that because because then I mean, me and the client have an inside joke or like, you know, so we can text. Do you know what I mean? So I, I really need to find a medium myself. But as, a, as far as right now, even website, I Googled it, how to build a website. I had no idea, but everything is on Google or YouTube or anything like, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. Because I, I love your website. I love your branding. I love your name. I think you've done a really great job on it. And you can tell you, you are right. You can tell that you have put a lot of intention into everything versus just slapping it on or whatever. And so you yeah. can definitely tell that, which I think helps, you know, that's when the trusting process begins before Agreed. they even contact you before they even get on a virtual consultation for you is they're already deciding whether or not they can trust you and like you and if you're going to be even worth their time to do a consultation. So I think you're absolutely right. And like for the listeners listening, when you get time, you got to check her out, her website, her Instagram, because it is true. You can definitely see you've put, put a lot of thought into it. And it's so interesting to me too, because coming from a background of accounting, everything that you do has been so creative. So it's almost <laughs> like you could have totally missed your entire calling by just crunching numbers versus creating everything that you have from your logo to the name to your actual results with clients. So it's just astounding. Like it's, it's very Thank impressive, you, it's motivating and it's inspiring. And it sounds like a lot of it was the mindset because I always tell people, if you wanna get into a fast track of getting to know who you are in personal development, become an entrepreneur because yeah. every limiting belief, insecurity, self-doubt is going to come at you tenfold. And what you do with that is going to determine whether or not you're going to be successful. So I think a lot of people, they'd rather just kind of bypass that and not realize mm -hmm. how limiting literally your beliefs can be on movement forward or taking action. Or like you said, that next determining factor of, okay, I've invested in a training. And so now it's like, do I immediately apply? Or am I going to be waiting for perfection, right, to exist yeah. before I can really give myself permission to start this, which, you know, me and you, I can totally relate to that. Mm -hmm. No portfolio. No, there is no such thing as perfection. True. And one of the other things that I did do was I contacted med spas because I just wanted people to know about this. And I had no idea how I would let people know that camouflage tattooing was a thing. So I contacted med spas to just let them know that this is a thing. Nothing really came out of that, to be very honest. And that's okay because not everything's going to work out the way you thought it was going to work out. Write down your goals and don't back up no matter how scared you are and no matter how how much you think you're not ready you really are ready if you got a good training please I've also heard horror stories where you have like a three-day training and they never went over camouflage tattooing and I'm like you were okay with walking out of there like you know and not confront the trainer like hey this is what I paid for never touched camo or never made the ink you know palettes like that wouldn't fly with me so definitely um find a trainer don't find someone because they're cheaper find someone because they give the value and they have a portfolio and they've worked on so many different clients you know and that's one thing that you stood out Jade was like you worked on so many different different skin tones and you were so good at it so the reason why I come to you is because I want to learn from the best and and I have to trust that you know you would do your part which you always have that you would give that to me and I also that's why like choosing a good trainer really is important as well because you have to make sure you feel confident when you leave and after that it's you and your mindset and your inner talk inner voice you know and truly understanding how much control we really have over our life and over our own thinking mm -hmm. uh, you really are one decision away from a completely different life and my life is like day and night and not only my life like my family as well you know it's just been so amazing and it's just been a year so I can't believe it 
cannot believe it. And it's been fast. You know, when I think about so fast at school for four year degrees in education. And when you think about the grand scheme of things, it's been really fast and you've done excellent. The other thing I wanted to talk about, because look, I'm humble enough to know my training cannot include everything. And so I love that you continued your education because I am an advocate for that. Like I always tell people, I'm only going to be with you for three days or whatever. So there's going to be a lot more things that you're going to learn once you start getting out into the field. And there's just so much more to learn about tattooing in general. Of course. Uh, So with your continuing education, are there any classes or certain things that you can share with the listeners that added another level for you that was actually worth your time, worth the value? Sure. It really helped you. Yeah, absolutely. The color theory class that Inclusions had was amazing. Uh, They went into depth. And I also took, you know, the needle class that you told me. I wasn't really a fan of it. Yeah, why not? No. The way I thought it was not professional, the way. Well, okay, I will say. We're not going to name her because I don't want to talk. But I did recommend, and which I do recommend a needle class. So I will say, I get what you're saying. She's Mm -hmm. not very professional in her delivery but she does know what she's talking about does she because i couldn't get past through it (laughs) i wasted my money couldn't oh no yeah so yeah it's a little confronting especially if you have a standard professionalism like i was confronted to the very first time i ever got trains or invested in one of her trainings she yeah. does know her, and this is a well-known trainer she travels mm-hmm. all over the world she gets asked to do tons of expos and events she definitely knows what she's doing but personality wise her standard of professional I agree. I agree so not just personality just the way it was conducted like if it was like a training class I feel like you would talk to the class and teaching right there was a lot of like not even Oh, I don't want to go into that. <laughs> I don't want to go no, into I that, but there it. wasn't, you know, it was just not, she didn't capture me. She did not. I was like, this is a waste of my time, not even money. Cause I knew like, if, if you told me to take a needle class, I would do it, but I couldn't finish it, Jade. <laughs> You know what? I, no. I get that. I'm sorry, girl. I, I no, get that's okay. that. Maybe you could just read the transcript or something. I probably should. <laughs> but, but, you know, to like, just kind of let, you know, listeners know, like, you have to be self-aware because I'm telling you, some of these consultations that I do with clients, mm-hmm. they will tell me, oh, I consulted with someone that was closer to me. I can, mm-hmm. I did a consultation before I called you and I didn't really get a good, get a good vibe. That person showed up late, that person didn't respond, or it wasn't that professional. And so I hear that on a daily basis when I do mm-hmm. consultations. So if you're listening to this, you have to realize that is very noticeable to other people. And so, you know, for example, this trainer, she's extremely brilliant, extremely knowledgeable and experienced in the industry. But if you don't pay attention to your standard of professionalism, if you're not self-aware on what other people are needing from you, or if they're engaged, you know, or any of that, you're not picking up on those signs, you've lost them. Because here I am referring this trainer or this course to Gen C, you know, and, and you can't even get past it because of (laughs) her professionalism and her antics or whatever. And so like artists are doing that to potential clients as well. So one thing I also in my consultation, what I realized is other people are kind of being pushy. Yeah, you got to do this or like telling them that, you know, one thing about camouflage tattoo, it's like, you got to let the client choose when they want to get it done. And if it's July, and they have a vacation in August, I'm not taking you. That's my standard. Of course, you know, I'm not going to say like, oh my God, by by August, you'll be fine. Uh Uh-uh. I don't know that. I can't have you go out in the sun, you know, and your stretch marks are going to look worse, you know, than they were when they were white because it's in the healing period. So letting them know that. And they're like, wow, you know, I didn't know that they were kind of being pushy to get it done right away. So you would be healed in August. I'm like, we can't predict that at all. And August, definitely not, because that's like 30 days, you know, while the stretch marks heals for 40 to 60 days. So really, we're there to let people know that these are the things. And hey, do you want to get it done? And if you don't, that's totally fine. It might not fit your lifestyle, but there are literally millions of other people who are waiting for this treatment to just happen. Yeah, I love that. 
Okay, so you talked about the color theory. Any other things before we wrap it up? Because it's already been an hour, which I can't believe it. You know, I've done a lot of like YouTube, what other, just other, just tattoo artists, you know, even though this is camouflage tattoo is different than regular tattooing in per se, like the shading and the technique and everything I just really wanted to know about like hyperpigmentation skin skin healing like how to really tattoo different skin tones so I took a bunch of courses but color theory is what comes to my mind a lot of them are free too on like Skillshare or YouTube or even other really established artists have free courses that they have really that are just truly there to help beginners like us and also I'm learning as I am treating my clients. And I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing and my portfolio was like so different, like, which means that I worked on different skin tones before I even would train because I think training, you got to be on a different level, but you do because you are now responsible to teach all these students. You need that experience and you can't really bypass that and nothing, you know, you can do, you know, a lot of people, you know, thinks followers is what makes you, you know, the thing. And it's really not, you can tell, not going to get into all that, but, but, you know, it's look at, look at your person's portfolio you know do they have amazing work that's what you should look and that's how you should pick your trainers and I would highly recommend I always recommend people to you Jade because you literally changed my life as a client's perspective and also as a trainee and you even told me like always learn Jin so you know continue and I've always been that kind of a person you know we all have different styles of teaching and we pick up different things from other, different people. So I agree, babe. I, yeah. I'm so excited that you're training. I'm so excited that you've experienced the success that you have. I do know that people are in good hands when they train with you. We're doing something completely different next year. We're completely revamping our training program and it's mm-hmm. not going to fit and it's not going to be for everyone, which is uh-huh. specifically designed for that. But if there are people who are interested in getting in sooner and to doing your training is how long? Camouflage tattoo, two days. Okay. So if yeah. people are wanting to do a two-day training, you and maybe one other pe- person are the only people I would recommend. And so that I know for a fact, they would get a detail, professional training and with integrity in the sense that yeah. you have worked. You, not only have you gotten this done, right? Like I, I can't even relate to that because I don't have stretch marks. So I personally have not been yeah. camouflage tattoo. So you have yeah. a really unique perspective in that. And I think that's really important for people to not only learn from, but to have in a trainer because you can talk about that client perspective of being like, oh crap, is this going to heal? You know, <laughs> did I make the right decision? <laughs> to eventually starting your own business, which I really love because that's why I wanted to bring you on here because you literally did not come from the beauty industry whatsoever. <laughs> not even an entrepreneurship background but you jumped in with two feet and within a matter of what like two three years you have a one year one year yeah one year since you've been doing yeah so my first client was april of 2021 so a year and like two months it changed my life jade it changed my life and And i think happy and fulfilled in doing this i am so happy and my clients are happy and it's like a little part of me is healing, you know, that 16 year old Jinsi is healing because I truly am like my life came in a full circle. I always thought I was like cursed in some way because I was like, how did I get so much stretch marks? Like I was never, and I was very ignorant, you know, before I got into this industry to think like only people who would gain weight would have stretch marks. And that's so wrong. You know, your genetics, everything plays such a huge part. I'm a positive thinker, but this is something I just could not wrap my head around. And you don't need to, the beauty is you don't need to have like all this prerequisites or requirements needed. All you need is your decision that you're going to do this and trust that the universe got you as well. You know, you don't have to figure everything out. Let the universe do its work as well. And truly, I'm really guided through the whole thing. That's why I'm like, I can't, oh my God, knock on wood, can't say a bad experience whatsoever or anything close. Of course, you know, healing period takes a little, but 
on darker clients, I'm very transparent with them. And I tell them my story and I tell them when they, <laughs> I remember you're like, Jinsi, you're like the worst person <laughs> who can't take the pain. And I thought I was like a badass who yeah. could take the pain. And it was, it was painful, but it's so worth it. Yeah. And so, so, so worth it. And yeah, it's been so amazing. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share your experience. I'm also going to have this in the show notes, but real quick, what are the two best ways of people to find out more information about you? Yeah, definitely Instagram at Invisimark and my website, yourinvisimark.com. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jency. And for all the listeners, she's extremely approachable. So definitely make sure you send her a message, let her know what you thought about this and go ahead and follow her. And if you're interested in training, you know where to find her. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd love to connect and help you more. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer, please send it to jade at studioconceal.com. That's J-A-Y-D at studioconceal.com and I might highlight it on my podcast. I find what's often personal is most general. So if this episode helped you, please share it with a friend who may need the encouragement and inspiration. I'll catch you on the next one.